All right, just for um, fun, we're going to do one last thing before we start building out the app. Let's create one last table. And I'm just going to call it views table because we want to use that table to track all the views. So I'll just come here and up arrow key and change this to views. Create underscore views. All right, table. So we're going to track which um, video has this user watched all right or which course have they taken we just want to um, use it to track that all right so now it is created um, if we back here uh, we're just waiting for it to create so we're good it is created if we come here and click on create views table we see that views table has already been created so cool so now we're going to view something. We're going to know, first of all, the user that is uh, making the view. So user, we're going to go integer. And then we'll say user ID. We want to know the user that is viewing what, all right? And then um, we can say table. we we'll start tracking other things. We want to know what they are viewing, integer. What they are viewing, they could be viewing another user profile. Uh, we can say user account ID. That is the profile of some other user. We want to know how many people viewed your profile. So I'll make it null level. Okay, it could be empty because so it may be it may not be a profile that they're viewing. And then we're gonna check the next thing. Uh, for instance, they could be viewing a category, category ID, or uh, they could be viewing uh, a course. But the most important thing, the most important reason we're doing this is we want to know the particular item they're viewing. We want to track the user's progress. So if you come to a course, certain course, let's say the course has 10 different videos on it. If you take five out of those videos, if you've watched five, want, if you come back tomorrow, you should be able to see that you have already watched five of those. All right, it should be obvious straight up that you've watched five of those. The remaining five all right that's what we're trying to track uh there could be other things uh that we could track in the future but this is just sufficient for now all right okay uh one thing we need to confirm is that course has views and um view count let's say course not cost user uh payments not payment items items should have views we need to know how many people in total that has viewed this um, item yes we can find it out from views but um as you will realize as we go on it could be better to just track it straight up you can say view counts uh even if you don't understand don't worry we're gonna get to that so we're gonna say uh default is zero basically every time somebody opens this uh item or views it we're going to add it to view count all right if we add it to view count we are going to mark that that individual has uh, has seen it here i'm just going to put the user's id and view the uh, put the course id or item id now uh, why we're doing it in two places is so that we don't have to run a lot of queries whenever we want to retrieve it otherwise uh, uh we could just do it only here but it to demand that we run a lot of queries before we can see that all right let's just confirm that items have um, view count yeah and like it's integer and then uh, i'll just have to copy the view count and pass it on to some of our other things uh we don't need view count in comments we need um view count in categories okay it's already there and uh, we need that in courses view count it's already there beautiful and uh, users uh, maybe we should just check how many people does view this profile i think it sounds cool to know how many people that view this profile okay so we're good now we're gonna do what we did earlier remember when we uh, created we ran a sim single command and the command went to our database and created all the tables we had in our migration this is a perfect time to run that again all right so i'm gonna do ctrl c to end this okay so i'm gonna do php artisan uh migrate it's gonna take if we not if we don't add fresh we have to do colon fresh 
remember what colon fresh does it um deletes everything in your database and recreates all of them again if you don't do colon fresh it's going to give you an error and now we have an error so okay so syntax error says violation invalid default value for status in where um it's really difficult to know where this is syntax error violation payments okay say so default value for status in payments so let's go to payments status okay status was tiny integer here oh cool i think we should just make it string i think strings is okay so we come over and uh, run that command again uh, up arrow on my keyboard and hit enter and um everything seems to have gone perfectly well so let us see what has happened in our database so if we go to our laravel database uh, we need to log in click ok so here we've done that uh see how many tables it created categories uh, comments courses course user items migrations uh, payments users see we're good to go we're 100% good to go all right okay so now we're gonna pull off the magic we were talking about so you need to go online and search for an uh, infom laravel generator so if you search for infom laravel generator you search for it on google that's exactly what we're looking for so you see in VOM, uh Laravel Generator Docs, that's what we're looking for. So this is basically like a plugin we will add and it will automatically create the whole, um, uh, what do you call it, HTML or the .blade files for us. And also create our controllers and create our models. It's just amazing as you'll find out very soon. So um, this is the page. Now if you just scroll down, you see a lot of things you can do, core features, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm just going to show you, just click on start installation. Okay, um, installing beer boiler plate fresh uh, code. So first of all, we need to go to a composer.json and add this. All right, inside the require method, we're going to add this. So I'm going to copy exactly this, copy, then go look for composer.json. And um, composer.json uh, should be here. Let me show you where exactly that is. So if you scroll all the way down, uh, you will see it somewhere here. You see composer.json. We click on it once. And then it has opened. We'll look for the require. See where we're looking for. This require field. I'll put a comma here. Put a comma, hit enter. And then control V, what I copied. So this is what we're going to add. Save. Control S. And we're good. Uh, okay, so the next step is... Um, so if you want to generate swagger annotations, yeah, we want to generate everything. Copy this and add to. So, comma, enter, control V, and we're good. And uh, we keep going down. If you want to use generate from table option, yes, we need that. That's exactly the main thing we need. We copy this, copy. And now we've copied that, we're going to go right here and put a comma hit enter and paste beautiful now one more thing we're looking for is to run composer updates so we'll co copy this uh we'll go to our command prompt right here right click paste or you type it out composer update hit enter and we're gonna wait for a short while uh it will go on the internet make sure you have your internet connected it will go to, to on the internet and install all these things all these other things that we added now is going to install all of them from the internet it's going to take a few seconds to a few minutes but um while it's going on we're going to do some other things so we're going to go to config folder look for app.php and add this in the service provider section so I'll copy these files copy and go to config folder and look for app.php see config folder app.php is the first now we're looking for services we scroll down 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 i want to scroll. okay down 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 okay now we have providers right i'll you can add it at the top though but i like to add it at the bottom right here hit enter ctrl v we've pasted see 
save control s and uh, right here we have um, the next thing we have to add in the add is a add the following alias to add in the aliases section i'll co copy this control c come down in the app.php uh, folder come down look at the aliases section scroll down down at the bottom there's already a comma so i don't need comma hit enter control v control s to save all right so the next thing is um we're going to publish run this publish vendor copy now to run that we need uh, to make to wait for composer update to finish so i'm going to pause this video until composer finishes updating then we're going to run the publish all right so we have um uh, concluded the uh, installation from the internet now we can continue with the rest of the application uh, development so here it is written i think i should zoom in so you can see exactly what i'm doing here it is written and it is said that thou shalt uh, install this so we copy this go to uh, this place right click paste and click publish um, this tool is asking us a very important question it said which or tags which provider of tags would you like to publish? So these are different things we can publish, but we want to publish everything. So we're going to put zero. Zero says publish files from all providers and tags listed below. When you become one, um, when you become very advanced and understand this thing very well, you can start choosing which ones to install. But for now, we want everything. So I'm going to put zero. I'll put zero. You see? Hit enter. And we're good. We're good. Everything is complete. So we get back to the page and start following it. Says up, update all API routes. So we're going to go to app folder, providers folder, and look for route service provider, and then update this particular function. So we're going to copy this and put, replace whatever we find in this function there. So app providers. So we'll go here, scroll up, look at the app folder. We're looking for providers, app service provider. Then we'll look for here just to confirm that we're in the right place. You say go to route service provider sorry route service provider so we're looking for here so this is what we're looking for as you can see that's what they have here it said update map api routes so we're just gonna remove everything here and replace it but i want to paste it below so you can compare first so it is below as you can see the first two lines are the same but then there was something else that was added you see so we're going to delete what was here before and leave this one control s i've saved then um we have added as prefix to separate out is that okay uh customize uh configuration optional okay so we're going to publish generic stuff php artisan inferior generator we're going to publish that so right click paste publish and this is cool and then um, it created a lot of files. All these things we're doing are creating a lot of files, as you will see. Uh, but uh, let's just continue. This is publish layout command. Now, this is going to, what you have to note is that Laravel, uh, Laravel 5.7 uh, comes with Bootstrap 4, in case you've not noticed. So if you go to, I think, um, in the public folder, and we look at the css and we look at app.css you will see that it say that this is bootstrap 4.1 you understand so bootstrap is a framework for designing uh websites at the front end now if you don't know how to code bootstrap 4.1 because bootstrap 3 is uh, uh more popular and it has is now being phased out if you don't know how to use bootstrap 4.1 go to my channel on youtube so go to youtube.com slash c slash brain term brain term org brain term org you see so if you go there you will see or just go to youtube and search for brain temple tutorial tv you will see it so you will see my channel on youtube and from there you will see my bootstrap 4.1 tutorial it's free it's about 50 videos in that video we cloned udemy uh, udemy.com so clone udemy.com from scratch using bootstrap it will perfect your understanding of bootstrap and i can tell you by far it is the most detailed bootstrap 4.1 course right there okay so this is the channel when you open it you will see 
a red button here to subscribe make sure you subscribe first then you can scroll down and see the bootstrap look at the bootstrap 4 tutorial see 55 videos now another way to see it is to click on playlist if you click on playlist you'll see bootstrap 4 tutorial all right so that's one place you can always get uh tutorials so if you're watching this video at all even if you know bootstrap 4.1 you need to follow my channel on youtube so we are now in this page and if you um, remember we clicked publish layout so we now want to publish the first thing is telling us to publish is this we're going to copy this and run copy go here paste publish layout it's going to take a few seconds and it's going to be done so it's asking us now uh, app.blade already exists do you want to overwrite it yes you say yes is redesigning our site okay say so home the blade already exists do you want to override it yes um login the blade yes we want to override uh which other one register the blade yes so all these things is doing is redesigning the site you will see the new design very soon email yes just type y yes 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 everything yes yes existing route detector should be uh our standard route yes home control already exists yes everything is done now okay cool next step is saying this command generates following files okay we already know what it does uh, like i told you it does a lot i don't want to start wasting time by walking you through okay so now the next thing is menu configuration you know this is building what we're doing now is automatically building a website for us so this is the menu this right part is the is the menu of the website so it's asking us how to uh, configure it so it's asking us whether it should automatically generate menu we want to say yes so we're going to go to um copy this so, um go to config infom laravel generator.php and um, make this option to be enabled all right so we're going to go to config folder infom laravel generator.php and we're looking for menu if you scroll down you'll see menu 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 uh, usually i like to just search because there are so many settings here what i do is ctrl f then type menu menu okay you see menu so it's asking um should it enable menu it is true so we just want to confirm you see add-on menu is enabled true so it's enabled by default so we keep going uh is where uh, add-on dot menu dot file is where menu for particular model will be added if you want to customize it then you can customize it to be respective which you use okay we're good we're good so now we are going to do um i think the next step is to go to getting started so in case you're wondering what has been happening so far let me just um show you uh we're somewhere here a uh, lot of this side these are lot of side let me refresh it so it's refreshing it has refreshed so let's go to login page click on login and um, it is opening so can you see it uh it has designed a very beautiful login page for us different from the one we had before all right same thing with the register page the register the sign up page that we had before see it has redesigned a sign up page very beautiful clean sign up page we just need to get in and start editing all these the texts but the whole of this thing is now well designed you see very beautiful so but we're not done yet because uh we need to design all other pages so you get to um get your standard generator commands first thing is teaching us how to um what it does is basically we run a command in the command prompt here this is our command prompt we run a command here it will go to a database study the table we have in a database then it comes back to our Laravel app and designs the pages according to the table in the database all right so uh, we're going to find the best way to do that we're going to do that from table in the database you can do this from console or from file but since we already have a table in a database that's where we'll do it from click on input from table so here we are in input from table so you can also specify your own custom table name mm -hmm. generate from table this is what we're looking for so we copy this and we start generating one after the other from our table files so if you go to our database we have the first table as categories so we'll come to the command prompt right click paste 
the table name will delete this part last part it's the table name is category categories all right then we go back to the model name remember i told you that model names are usually singular of the table name and capitalized all right they start with capital letter so it's going to be capital c category and a singular category 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 all right so we hit enter it's going to take a few seconds uh within two to five seconds and it has created everything for us okay so i'm going to show you what it's created so far that it is showing us the file it's generated but let me show you what it looks like if we come to our laravel app which is here and we do slash category categories hit enter you see it has created this for us a list of categories page so um we're going to do this for all the tables so we're going to do that very fast and we do it for comments so we get right here back up arrow key change this to comments comments you see so we come here remember guess what it will be it's going to be in capital c and singular comment enter and we're going to do exactly that for courses all right so same thing usually i like to have like two different windows open so that this thing doesn't waste my time so we're gonna do courses and um, course so if you use if you design your Laravel app this way it's going to save you a lot of time okay a whole lot of time we're gonna do course user items so by now you should guess how we're gonna name the table for course user all right so remember it is course underscore user both in singular that's a table name but if we come here we're going to call it course cap capitalized you see uh the model names are usually capitalized and singular course user and we're going to do items items then we will not do migrations we will not do password resets but we'll do payments so we're gonna do for items items item hit enter okay so we're gonna do the same thing for payments for users and then for views payments payments then we have payment then we do for user users user then we do for views views is the last one remember that this is just a basic course website uh, after we finish building it you can add you can start adding new features all right you can add create a new table come do this what, what we're doing right here and then uh, be able to add new features so it's allowed you can do that uh, for, for now I just want to make sure that we get through the basics get the basics out of the way all right so everything has been done now it is now time to go look into our Laravel folder to see what was achieved so right here we're gonna see that um, in the storage in resources so if you go to resources go to views folder 
you will see that a lot of things have happened so i'm just trying to drag this up a lot has happened see in, in views folder we have um layouts so this has not updated we'll click on refresh refresh resources views okay so now it has um, updated you see we have categories folder comments courses all those tables we run in the command prompt you see that's created all these files so let's see what's in each folder i see one two three four five six seven seven files or eight files seven files per folder all these things are things that would have taken us weeks to create and we just did it in a few minutes all right so um each one this is the file for creating the form this is one for updating it and so on another thing it created is if we go to the route file I'll go to web.php what do you think we're going to see we're going to see that it has added it has created so many routes for us look at so many routes for us this is beautiful very very beautiful and uh, it solves a lot of our problems and now we can go st uh, and start browsing around our website because it's created many tool because if you look at uh, views and you go to I think layouts you're going to see sidebar and menu you see it's created a very nice menu see list of all those apps on very nice menu so what we're gonna do right now is to go see for real what it looks like we come here and uh, we click on home or oh, I will need to log in so it takes me to log in I forgot what my password is there what the hell was my password? I've forgotten. I have forgotten. So, but it's good as you can see, it's already given us um cool um error reports. I have forgotten what my password is. All right, given that I've forgotten, I will create another one. Let me create another account. Um, the email. I'll do I'll just modify the email a little and just say to copy the password and uh, password again hit enter agree to terms yeah we don't have any terms but it created it for us click register and um, guess what beautiful website very beautiful you see it is the website it created for us website with all these um, categories is still loading one is downloading you see icons here you see this is what it looks like very beautiful and um these are categories if i click on category you see all the categories so if i want to add a new category i'll come here and click on add new you see there is the name the description the view count and remember that if we go to our database and click on categories structure what we're going to see is what name description view count you see but then the rest of these are hidden the time it was created the time it was updated deleted so you see this thing is a very int intelligent system and it also looks at the variable type to know how to create it and remember that the id field is hidden let's see there is no id field it has already hidden it by default very smart very very smart all right and um let's create a category category could be uh e-commerce e-commerce um this is the category for creating e-commerce apps okay or courses courses um, we're going to hide this so that our app will automatically updates the view count, but I just want to put one here for now. Click save. So we're creating a new one, a new category. See, it has created and it, does, it has automatically given us the message. Successfully created, very beautiful message. And then look at the list of categories. It now has the first one as e-commerce. With We are now seeing the description. You see, there's the view count one already then we can see we can view more of it we can edit it we can delete it this is just awesome especially knowing that it has created all this you see all right um it's the same way with all these other um menu that you're seeing here 
it just did a whole lot of work for us a whole lot so um we need to add this field remember that we made a mistake we didn't add the soft deletes to users field look at in our in our database migrations users there is no soft delete here so this is our error so i'm going to add soft delete somewhere copy soft delete copy go to users and add it now i've added soft delete what i can do is go back to our database and manually add it because if you run migration again it's going to wipe everything again i don't want it to wipe everything all right i have to manually add a deleted that field for users so this is the sample it's the type is timestamp so go to users and here we can click on structures and um, we're going to tell it to add deleted at above created that so we're going to click here look for remember token which is this it will, it will add that field below it so hit enter add deleted at the the type is timestamp um i just saw it now timestamp uh there's no length of values and nothing else what we're just going to do is to click save um i think we should also leave it now i'll go back to structure and make sure that it's no level see all these other ones are no level we need to set it to null here you know when it is null it means that if somebody is filling a form and didn't enter any value for it it's it will not throw any errors so we're going to click select no click save if there is um it's throwing an error i think i should delete it and recreate it again so i'm going to click um structure structure i have to delete it and create it again structure as usual i can just delete out all these parts that i made a little mistake but um it, it also means that if you make that mistake you will not know how to uh, how to solve it so i like to leave my mistakes so now we set it to now set this to timestamp set it to deleted that and click save works perfectly so if we refresh this page now this error will go so every time you get an error in laravel always look at what is written here it's usually uh, where the the problem is from so it makes sense so see, this is the first user that exists in our database uh dave ozalo whatever and uh, mail and this is the password as you can see this is not the password i entered and in case you don't understand this is the encrypted password so laravel takes whatever normal password you, you entered and transforms it into uh, this gibberish that nobody can understand this is um to help uh, prevent hackers uh, from easily gaining access to the database and seeing what your password is so this ensures that you are the only person that knows what your password is okay so we will continue in the next video where we will achieve other things thank you very much